Hello everyone, hope you are good and be happy always. Once again, welcome to Shachi's Academy and now we will discuss part 2 of cost analysis. In part 1, we have already discussed what is cost, what is cost analysis, what is opportunity cost, what is explicit cost and what is implicit cost along with what is cost function. And now we will discuss other different types of cost in this part. So let's start with this topic. Incremental cost and sum cost. First of all, look at this term, incremental. Incremental word has been taken from increment or increase. That means increase on some, something, increase in cost of something or additional cost has been added. Here, incremental cost is the additional cost due to change in the level or nature of business activity. When you increase production of some commodity or you change the level, that means magnitude of some commodity or you change the nature of commodity. Suppose previously you were producing only 100 packets of bread in your bakery but now you are producing 1000 packets of bread in your bakery. That means you will have to invest more in that production and that is incremental cost. Secondly, if you change the nature of commodity, for example previously you were producing only simple bread but now you are producing sweetened bread, high end bread or maybe buns or maybe other kinds of uh, bakery items like biscuits, cookies, etc. So you have changed the nature of business activity and for that you have to invest in uh, new machines, sophisticated tools and other items. So that is incremental cost. The change may take several forms such as addition of new product line. You are adding new product line just for example we took uh, sweetened bread or just cakes, pastries or cookies etc. Then adding a new machine or uh, replacing a machine by a better machine. Then, for instance, if a company has to incur an additional expenditure of rupees 5 lakh in producing another product on the same plant, the incremental cost would be rupees 5 lakh. That means the whole amount will be incremental cost, whatever you are doing in your business over here. Then, sunk cost. Then again, look at the term sunk is the past tense of sink. So, here, whatever has sunk, whatever is gone forever. Whatever investment you did, it is finished now. It can't be taken into consideration if you take any business decision. That is over now. That means here some cost is the cost which does not change with the level of production of business activity. These costs are not relevant to current or future business decision making. Then, for example, the increased cost of additional capital borrowed for expansion in business is incremental cost. As we seen before, that if you want to increase production, that is incremental cost. But while interest on the investment in plant and machinery introduced in the past is sunk cost. Here, this example is of your incremental cost and here it is of incremental cost. That means in, in, uh, uh, sunk cost are nothing but past incremental cost. That means in past or before two years, Previously, you paid interest on some capital that you took from bank as loan. But now that interest is not at all relevant for your present decision making. That means it is sunk, it is of no use now and you can't take any decision uh, on that ground. In one sense, sunk cost is past incremental cost. Thus, it is the incremental cost which is very significant. Here, sunk cost do not have that relevance as is uh, done by this incremental cost but it is of relevance only to see the past data what you did uh, previously or where your money went into interest loans etc so uh, some cost has no relevance in your production for present and future times replacement cost and historical cost here see the replacement word replace means to Bring in something new in place of something old or replace something with some other thing just like substitution. Okay, you are just placing something as in place of something here. Replacement cost is the price paid for new plant or machines to replace the old ones. When your machine becomes old, you buy a new machine, you discard the old machine and keep a new machine in place of that. That is replacement. Okay, so that is the price paid for new plant or new machinery. Historical cost are past data of cost incurred in plant and machinery or the cost of business operation in past. So whatever cost was incurred in past business activities is your historical cost. That is only data. Okay. Because now that cost is all gone. It is just like sunk cost. Okay. Historical cost is the past data of your uh, cost. So that is of no relevance now. But you need to keep it to 
compare it. Take for example, if your father says that I invested rupees 5 lakh in this business. That means, suppose in 1990 he invested 5 lakh rupees in some business. But now, how it has grown to such a large empire of business that is of relevance. So historical data is of relevance to compare the present conditions and the past ones. Historical costs are important for comparison of past and present data of cost. Okay. Then, direct or traceable cost and indirect or non-traceable cost. Direct costs are costs that are readily identified. Here direct is, we studied in our previous lecture. Please watch that video uh, and then you will understand these things properly. So, explicit cost is direct cost or accounting cost is also known as a direct cost. That means, you can identify them directly or that you pay in cash to other people to buy the commodities or buy raw material for business or buy machinery for business that is direct cost. That means cost that are included in your account books that you pay in cash to some other people for gaining some inputs for business. Direct costs are costs that are readily identified and are traceable to a particular product, operation or plant. For example, explicit cost on plant, labor, raw material etc which is kept in book of accounts. So you record all these costs in book of accounts. Indirect costs are not readily identified nor visibly traceable to specific goods, services or operations. For example, uh, electric power, cost of canteen, sanitation, hygiene, aesthetics of building of firm are all your indirect or non-traceable costs. Among these costs, you can't identify that what part of aesthetics expenditure or expenditure on hygiene was particularly done for increasing the quality or quantity of your production. So, they directly can't be traced back to your production activity. So, that's why they are known as indirect or non-traceable cost. Then, shutdown and abandonment cost. Again, look at the, your term shutdown. That means stopping or cessating. You are terminating your production for some time and not for on permanent basis. Take for example, in COVID-19, during COVID-19 lockdown, all the firms were shut down to stop or halt production for some period of time during lockdown only. But they were not abandoned forever. They resumed their work just after lockdowns or were relaxed. Okay, so here they are the cost incurred in the event of a temporary cessation or termination of business activities and which could be saved if operations were allowed to continue. For example, when during the lockdowns, these companies were shut down in India and across the whole world, what happened? They had to pay their rent, they had to pay salaries of their managers and administrative staff and some of the companies paid salaries to their employees as well and your uh, all the helpers also. So they were so generous during that time. That means they had to bear those all costs. But for what use? These companies were not producing anything. They were not selling anything. That means they were just bearing the cost. And this cost could have been saved if the operations were active or they did not shut down for COVID-19. So what is that? Here, people are bearing cost due to shutdown of operation and these costs are known as shutdown cost. Then, here the property is not disposed of. You are not selling that property away, but you are just halting or terminating your production or stopping your production for some time period only. For example, many firms shut down their operations during COVID-19. Then, abandonment costs are cost uh, of retiring a fixed asset for use. Suppose you are incurring losses year after year and you don't want to continue your production in some uh, field or you want to just dispose of or sell off your firm. You don't, don't want to continue that business. Then what you will do? You will sell machines. You will plant. Uh, you will sell your plant. You will, uh, or you will just give away the uh, building which you were renting for your building. So you will just ask all the employees to find some other job. That means you are completely abandoning that business. You are stopping or you are quitting that business forever. Okay. Then, for example, a plant installed in war time may not be useful during peace time. During World War. 1 and World War 2 and they went on for many years and during that time many factories were installed specifically for fulfilling the demand of artillery for food material for other items for army uh, services. So what happened to those plants after war? They all were abundant that means they were disposed of, they were sold off. Okay, then it may, means 
permanent cessation of activity and raises the problem of disposal of assets here assets are disposed of forever and they are not resumed production does not resume after some time just like during shutdown short run versus long run cost short run costs are cost for small increase in production for short period it does not involve buying new plant and machinery for example you produce 1000 packets of bread per day in your bakery plant and now you have order of some 100 packets more packets to produce in your uh, factory so what you will do you will produce these additional packets of bread just by using your existing machines just by uh, asking your worker to work two hours more and just running by your, uh, your machines for two hours more so what you have done you have used your uh, available machines and available worker to increase your production but you have not purchased any new machines or you have not hired any new worker for that particular production so what ha have you done during short period of time you have used your resources available resources intensively you have asked your worker to do overtime and produce those packets of bread with those available machines okay so what you have you done you have used your own resources and not bought any capital equipment for the same short run costs are more relevant when a firm has to decide whether or not to produce more in immediate future so immediately if you have to increase production in immediate future you can't uh, suppose uh, in our example what we saw we have uh, order of 100 packets of bread additional packets of bread so we had to increase our production but we can't buy new machines overnight or you can't buy a new plant install a new plant overnight so what will happen you will use your resources available resources intensively and increase your production when you don't buy new machines when you don't buy uh, new plants that is your short run cost short run costs are more relevant when firm has to decide whether it has to produce more during short period of time immediate future in this case setting up a new plant is ruled out and the firm has to manage with the given plant you can't buy new machines or set up a new plant and you have to manage with the old plant only long run cost long run cost are those that vary with output when all input factors including plant and equipment vary when your plant varies when your equipment vary when you buy new machines that is your long period that means in long period you may become a big businessman you may expand your business you may have huge amount of money you may take loans from bank and you may buy everything new that means in long run you can buy anything you can change anything you can do anything that means during long period you can change everything and everything becomes variable that means vary okay long run cost become relevant when the firm has to decide whether to set up a new plant in long run you can set up new plant and it is very important the long run cost can help the businessman in planning the optimum scale of production if you are planning for new business then long run is good otherwise in short period you can't invest huge amounts of money in your business and you need long period to invest in your business to buy a new plant to buy new machinery so long period is relevant for expansion of business setting up new plant or deciding the scale of plant that means increasing the scale of plant then fixed and variable cost fixed fixed costs are cost of fixed inputs and variable costs are cost of variable inputs what are fixed inputs fixed inputs are your plant and machinery we have been reiterating repeatedly saying that fixed cost fixed uh, inputs are your plant and machinery and what are variable inputs just like which can vary just like raw material uh, daily wage uh, workers are your variable factors so the cost of other things that you use in uh, your production fixed cost of an organization are those costs that do not vary with the size of its output okay if you have to increase your output in other, our example we manufactured 100 more packets of bread but we did not change plan we did not buy new machines so that is your fixed cost do not change with change in production these are the cost of the plant equipment building and other assets the organization which an organization has to bear even when its output is zero even if you do not produce a single packet of bread you will have to buy a new machine a baking machine um, then you have to have some building in which you can run your bakery that means you have to bear the cost of bakery and the plant and machineries even if you do not produce a single packet of bread okay fixed costs include interest on the investment in plant buildings and equipment depreciation of machinery and buildings and other fixed assets salaries of management and administrative staff these are all examples of fixed costs 
fixed cost cannot be avoided. You can't avoid fixed cost. In a, even though you do not produce a single um, unit of any commodity, you can't avoid fixed cost. These cost effects of the production has to be done. Why? Because if you have to set any business, first of all, you have to have some building or plant and you need to buy machines. Thereafter, you do production. And even if you do not do production, you have to first of all set up a plant and machinery. Then only it is called business. For business, it is essential and you can't avoid them. They can be avoided only when operations are completely closed down. But if like abandonment cost, if you want to just uh, uh, sell off your plant, you want to uh, just stop production, you want to stop that business, quit that business forever, then that is possible. You can sell your machines, you can sell your plant, you can give away everything and you can stop that business. We can call them as inescapable or uncontrollable costs. That means these costs cannot be escaped. They are uncontrollable controllable, and you can't control them. Variable cost. Variable cost of an organization are those costs that vary with size of output. You increase the output, they will increase. And you decrease the output, they will decrease. Variable means which can vary, which can change. Variable words come, comes from very word in English. And that means change. You can change them easily. Take for example, if you want more packets of bread to be produced in your plant, you use more raw material like flour, butter, sugar, chemicals, uh, your uh, other uh, um, preservatives etc. But if you want to produce lesser amount of bread of pack, uh, packets of bread, you can use less of raw material. So that is very simple. For example, cost of raw materials, wages and salaries of employees engaged in productive activities, charges of fuel and electricity, depreciation charges associated with wear and tear of assets, interest on short term loans, excise duty, routine maintenance, expenditure etc. are all variable cost. So that's how we complete our topic that is different types of cost. This, is, this was part 2 and we'll discuss other types of cost and cost relationships just like your variable cost, fixed cost, average cost, marginal cost and uh, LAC cost, long run average variable cost etc. in our next video. So keep in touch, uh, keep watching our videos. Thanks for liking and subscribing our channel. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you. Take care. God bless you.